Strike Point Gold is a, a junior explorer. I took over as CEO of the company in November of, 20, uh, November of 2022. Uh, we elevated Sean Kuntun to the role of, of executive chairman. Since then, what we've been doing is pivoting the company from a focus in Northern Canada into Nevada, which is my, my experience. Uh, we've done a lot of, of work. Just over a year ago, we acquired what was called the Cooperite Project from Origin Royalties. It's a, a geological analog to probably the newest and largest discovery in Nevada in the last 60 years. That's called the Silicon Discovery. That's a 4.2 million ounce deposit. It's on a caldera margin, and we are to the north of it, also on a caldera margin. These projects were withheld from staking by the US government, and that presents an opportunity for shareholders to get in on a known exploration target that hasn't had a kick at it in, up until this point in time. So we're gonna be out there drilling in, in 2024 and hopefully making a, a new discovery for investors. Myself personally, I used to run a company called Northern Empire. And it's an interesting story because it's the probably the, the, the fastest, most successful uh, exploration story that nobody ever heard of. We acquired an asset from Imperial Metals, it's called the Sterling Project, and we bought it for $10 million. 16 months later, we tripled the share price and we sold the entire company to Coor Mining for $120 million. The, the stock went straight up and gone. We made, a, made a, an aqua a sale, liquidity event. And that was a huge win for shareholders and a, a really important business decision. That project was subsequently sold to uh, Angle Gold as they consolidated around their new silicon discovery for $200 million. Probably to answer your question, the most significant discovery in Nevada in the last 20 years has been that Beatty district um, where Angle Gold has been working. They discovered a 4.2 million ounce deposit at the, the silicon. They consolidated the sterling. Uh, they have a, what they're calling the Merlin target with they're publishing a geological target of six to eight million ounces. And if you look at everything that they consolidated around the Beatty district, around that silicon discovery, it's been, uh, they're probably onto about 20 million ounces of gold in Nevada, which is unheard of for such a mature camp. I'm kind of biased because that's where, where my history is, but Nevada is, in my opinion, the, the number one mining jurisdiction. First of all, from a, from a company point of view, it's very easy to, to, to work in. There's a lot of investment. A lot of the big mining companies, whether it's, it's Newmont, Barrick, they have a joint venture. Kinross is there. Equinox is actually in California. But it's a big mining jurisdiction. SSR has got their flagship asset. So as a consequence to that, the regulators are very comfortable with, with mining. They know what it is, they're experienced, they're, they're well versed in, in mining. So they understand and when permitting gets, gets done, it's a very quick turnaround. We put in our, our exploration permits and it was about a 20 day process from the moment that we put the document in the BLM's hand to when they sent us over the, uh, the permit to drill. So very efficient, you know, 20 days is, is not that, that, that long. And then the, the third thing is, is Nevada itself. It's a wonderfully uh, geologically complex area, but, and it's where America goes to mine. There's lithium projects, there's gold projects, uh, there's copper projects, makeup, uh, clays for, for makeup that, that, that your wife wears, or even things like diatomictus earth, um, which is used for filtering things like red wine. It's where America goes to mine, so it is 100% the mining jurisdiction, in my opinion, on the planet. To your point, there's actually been some really uh, interesting m and in the, in the last little while. So my project, which I sold to Coor Mining, we sold, made that huge win for shareholders. That project was subsequently sold from Coor to Anglo Gold. So they bought it from, from Coor for $200 million cash. In addition to that, uh, as part of the consolidation of, of the Beatty District, Anglo Gold took out another company called uh, Corvus Gold for $370 million. So premier prices are being paid for, for assets in Nevada. And that, that M&A activity was 75 kilometers, or 75 miles, pardon me, to the south of us in a same geological setting. To the north of us, uh, about 15 miles further to the north, 
Centera bought an asset from Waterton. The, they were a precious metals fund. They bought it for up to $230 million for another project called Gemfield. And that sort of gives you the, the flavor of things that are, that are done in, in Nevada. Big mining companies are comfortable doing work in Nevada. And as the world gets more complicated, geopolitical risk comes up. Everybody goes to Nevada and it's a good place to be. Twenty twenty four for us kicked off with a with a bang. We received our, our permit for for drilling from from the BLM, so that was a very important step. We'd done a lot of the the groundwork before that. Now, what we have, have just uh, completed and the the fieldwork has been done. We finished a, another geophysical survey. We're in the process of, of processing that that data, and that will refine our drill program. Drill program is scheduled to start on February twenty six. We're looking at a ten hole program. Uh, 5,000 meters, so 500 meters each. That'll take us about 84 days to, to get that done. I'm anticipating that we're going to be bringing results for, for our new exploration work on the Cooperite Gold Project to market late April, early May uh, of 2024. Well, the way that, that I look at, at a company and the way that I, I structure a company, and, and you can look at this at, at for strike point is that I like to put in a backstop of value, uh, a, an experience management team and, a, and an exploration upside. And that's what I like to see in a company. When you look at strike point, we retain our, our BC properties, which are the backstop of, of value for, for the company. With it's the Porter and Willoughby projects and they're up by, by Stuart BC. They're past producers. They produced about 2 million ounces of silver at an average grade of 2,500 grams per ton. So very high grade great silver. That's a backstop of value for, for shareholders. The management team is the people that have to do the best with the cards that they're given. I've got a good wealth of experience in, in Nevada, and so that's what the board wanted to, to see. For And then the third pillar that we like to put into, into the company is an exploration upside. And when you look at the Cooperite Gold Project, massive land package, 44 square kilometers, great big soil anomaly, about 2.6 square kilometers, Lots of structure, lots of, uh, of, of ground preparation, and a really good exploration target that's never been tested in Nevada. It's a very unusual situation to be in in 2024, and we're excited to be out there and drilling shortly. I think that the, that the what we've done here is we've, been, we've brought together a, a really good team of people that have, have got a long history of working together. Sean Kuhn Kuhn is our executive chairman. He is the, the CEO of Dolly Barton Silver. He's a very uh, well-versed man in, in the capital markets. Uh, we brought together the, the team that I've worked with before uh, on Northern Empire and other uh, adventures. That's the CFO, Paulo Santos. He was also part of Caliber and New Market, so big names there. Uh, Knox Henderson is, uh, is handling our IR. He was uh, with me on a project in Nevada called the Hasbro Gold Project, and he had recent success with Great Bear. So we've got a, a fantastic network of investors that are watching what we're doing and are very interested to see us go forward on the, on the Cooperite Gold Project. Mm -hmm.